And I'm going to try to change everybody's view today on musical instruments, all musical instruments. I'm going to try to change your view forever. I'm going to take a shot at it. So the guitars are a combination of four things. They're musical instruments, something to make a sound to make music with. They are art. You can see it in Vogue magazine. It's part of our heritage. Um, they are complex tools for the musician to use to do their job. They're also applied physics devices. And I'm going to get into that pretty heavy t today. So for the most part, a very, very high percentage of human beings take their information with their eyes. Um, but in the end, if the guitar doesn't sound unbelievable, that guitar doesn't sound unbelievable, dead in the water. Goes under the bed, nothing happens, right? So um, the question would be, why do the musicians use the instruments? Why do these musicians use these guitars? And for us, there's an th underlying theory, uh, a physics theory, that all musical instruments are subtractive devices. It's mo normally thought of that it adds to the sound, it adds to the sound, and we believe that it, it's all subtractive. If you have a really loud piano with the same strings that, of a really quiet piano, the quiet piano is subtracting. That's the theory. And so what I want to do is I want to play with the theory, I want to prove the theory, I want to mess with the theory, I want to go into it with you today. So I live in a Newtonian world of physics, and um, this is a paraphrased version of Isaac Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay? And what I'm suggesting is the goal is six in and 5.9 out. That would be a great instrument. A really bad one would be six in and 1.8 out, right? So let me take you through a logic train. Let me take you through a way of trying to get your hands around this. And I'm going to try to prove the theory. So if I take that guitar and I put rubber tuning pegs and a rubber nut and a rubber bridge on it, is it going to sound better or is it going to sound worse? Thank you. Okay, second question. If I put seven of the same sets of strings on seven instruments, will it sound seven different ways? Yes. Okay, ooh, I like this. This crowd's active. <laughs> oh, the next one you're going to have trouble with. Does God put any extra energy into a magic instrument, or is it only how hard you hit it? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> now, there is God in guitars. I've played the guitar that was in Frank Sinatra's band that was played in that band, and you can almost hear him sing. I've played the guitar that Hendrix played on the Chitlin circuit, and it raised the, arm on, the hair on your arm. I have played uh, instruments that were almost portals. If you are sitting on a couch with a guitar that you love, you are in no pain, and when you put it down, there's no hangover. Therefore, guitars are sophisticated heroin. <laughs> right? Right? Now, answer my question. Is there any, does God put any extra energy into a magic guitar? Is it only how hard you hit it? It's only how hard you hit it. I'm going to argue. All right. <laughs> What I'm suggesting is a magic guitar is you put an energy of six in and you get 5.9 out. That's what I'm suggesting. And I'm going to go about um, proving it, but first, this one last question. There are, there's about 25 things, in my opinion, that change the sound of the guitar, so let's go through them. The tuning pegs, what are they made of? How are they attached? What's the nut made out of? Is it glued on? How well was it glued on? What's the neck wood made out of? How much water is in it? How much resin is crystallized in that wood? What's the finish made out of? How thick is it? How much rubber is in the finish? What did you finish made out of? What did you make the fretboard out of? How much water is in that? How much resin is crystallized in that? Did you glue the frets in? What's the bridge made of? How's it attached? What's the body? I mean, I'm going to go on and on and on and on and on. Well, you agree there's at least 25 things that will affect the tone? Yes. Oh, now I like that. I got three yeses and one I'm not so sure. I love it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to prove one of them without a shadow of a doubt, and I'm telling you what I'm showing you is 25 times worse or better, okay? Here's the magic bag of parts. All right. This is a plastic nut. Here's a bone nut, and here's the nut we use. That's made out of the same PVC pipe you hook your toilet to your septic tank with. <laughs> and I could just see this video on YouTube. Paul drops his nuts on the floor. That's not going to go real well. <laughs> all, right, so, all right, so look, 
but you spent three months making a guitar and you put that on it, it's trying to vibrate, but it can't, it's too soft. It's trying to vibrate, it can't, it's too soft. Bone, better. The stuff we use, better. Can you hear that? Okay, this is plastic, right? This is aluminum. Okay, it makes a difference what the materials are. I'm suggesting you put a better bridge on it. It's not that it adds to the sound, it subtracts less. Fair enough? Okay, good, we're getting somewhere. So now I'm gonna play with the theory. This is an unsubtractive instrument. All right, so this is an unsubtractive instrument. And it's sustaining longer than most electric guitars. Can you hear that? Now I'm gonna start getting subtractive with it, okay? I'm trying to shut it up and it won't shut up. I'm sorry, that just makes me happy. <laughs> right, so what happens is they start to sound symphonic when they're not subtractive, instruments do. So what I'm gonna play for you, which you heard just a second ago, I wanna play for you. It's about 25 seconds of something that Tony McManus recorded. Tony is considered by the BBC the best Celtic guitar player Scotland ever produced. He recorded the Chaconne. That's box piece for solo violin. And I want you to hear how symphonic it sounds. All right, let's go. It's, it's, it's big and it's beautiful. It brought the hair on my arms up too. He's, he's going like this, it brought the hair. That's good, right? That would, be, that would be music. That would be a musical instrument, right? Okay, good. So I had a very famous musician call me and drill me for about 20 minutes about why did this guitar that he had bought off the internet sound so good. And he was on my ass because his experience was now that his other guitars didn't sound so good, and it was changing the way he was playing, and he was drilling me. And I explained this whole theory to him. I also explained how we finished them, and I explained how we braced them, and I explained all that stuff. And I explained to him an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar are the same animal. One's got a speaker cabinet attached, and one doesn't. So like when you're playing electric guitar, these are microphones. And this is the strings and the guitar is the singer. No matter what mic you put on Barbara Streisand, she's not gonna sound like Frank Sinatra. It is not gonna happen, <laughs> right? And I was explaining this whole concept to him and he started to get it. And it was a, it was a really good moment um, for me. Once again, the goal is an energy of six in and an energy of 5.9 out, okay? So these are my words, but some instrument makers have understood this concept for centuries. Antonio Torres, who is the father of the guitar, I heard one of his guitars once. It just wells me up to even to talk about it. Three notes were played. I couldn't breathe. This thing was only three inches deep. It was really small. It was made out of maple. It shouldn't have sounded this good. It had more bass and more volume than anything I ever heard. He barely touched the string. I went, Ooh! You know, it was a static arrest, the Joseph Campbell concept, right? And I went, uh-oh. And I was able to x-ray it and try to figure out what the old man thought. He understood the concept. There's several instrument makers that I could quote that understood this physics concept. These are only my words, right? But I, this is not new. And so it applies to violins, it applies to pianos, it applies to saxophones, it applies to any musical instrument, drums. I mean, you could have a drum, hit it really hard, and, the next, and it's not very loud, and you hit the next drum, and it's really loud. You put the same energy into both of them, and one of them took your head off. That would be not subtractive, right? All right, so there's a sidebar I need to do. There are resonances in instruments. So you have, say, a hole in the guitar and it's got a ooh, kind of loud note coming out of it. That energy can't come from nothing. So it has to steal it from the bass and the treble above and below. So when you have a resonance, that energy's 
That it's loud is cool, but some other things are quieter. You don't get energy from nothing. It's only how hard you hit it. Fair enough? Okay, good. At some point, the guitar maker or the instrument maker runs out of physics. There's a ceiling. The string doesn't have enough weight. There's not enough grams in the weight of the string to get it any louder. And so you hit a ceiling. I like being at the ceiling, but I know you can't pass it. And um, it's just, I say run out of physics. You run up against the laws of physics. Physics, You can't get, put six in and get seven out. It doesn't work that way. It just, well, if you have an amplifier, maybe it does, but I'm talking about the acoustic part of the instrument, right? And so where did this all come from? Where did this concept come from? Well, 12 years ago, I wrote a document called The 21 Rules of Tone. And that document said, if you follow all 21 rules, you'll get a magic guitar. As you violate each rule, you'll take the magic away. And what I'm talking about is the fundamentals of that document, the physics uh, the subtractive physics of that document. And that thing took us, once it was written, 12 years to start to implement. Um, I'm not breaking the laws of physics. <laughs> I'm living in it. Does that make sense? And um, the fundamental is simple, but the application takes a lifetime. And a lot of guitar makers, what they do is they, they figure out... Uh, these concepts and they finally get it right and then they do the same thing for the rest of their life. It's very, very common. Um, so this is a new program, that, a computer program that's been patented that shows 10 seconds of that acoustic guitar that I just played. Look how complex what's coming out of the guitar is. That's what your cochlea, that's what your ear is measuring. There's all kinds of little uh, up and down volume things at the bottom, times going right to left, uh, Frequency is going from the bottom to the top and energy is how high it is. The goal is, once you play the guitar, your brain experiences it as musical, beautiful, and powerful. That's the goal. And that's what we're trying to do. And it's, it's complicated, but the fundamental principle underneath it is completely simple. So, the thing on your book says start now. And what I'm asking you all to do Y'all, I'm south of Mason-Dixon line, I'm sorry. All right, is when you have a musical instrument, any musical instrument, a bad one is robbing any energy from you, it's taking from you. A good one is giving back. A great one is giving it almost all back. Does that make sense? Okay, good. I'm not gonna get off the stage without playing that electric guitar, I'm sure that's true. So, uh, as a sidebar, we've been at war, I don't know, twice as long as World War II, something like that, maybe longer. And I think that we wouldn't have TED Talks if it wasn't for our armed forces from the beginning of this country or even before the beginning of this country till now. And I wanna honor them. I think what they're doing is extraordinary and uh, we wouldn't have cookouts without them and we wouldn't have TED Talks. So I wanna honor them with a piece of music. And we'll play a little electric guitar.